Um, you know, I know we jumped around a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk about the book, which has some recipes in it. Like, you know, Chanel Renee, the PR person, she came in here. She was raving about, the, you know, the yes. recipes. We're going to get to that in a second. The day um, you, you meet Master P, you know, which set forth a trajectory that, yes. you know, probably changed the rest of your life. Yes. Um, how did you get his attention? Okay. And, and, and what, what, what did it? I dropped a record in 1992 called The Payback. It was a diss record because uh, the boys in New Orleans, they were making all of these records. Cash, It was Cash Money, and um, it was the Big Boy. It was Take Four Records. All of the guys on, on, on these labels was dropping these records. Uh, the first, The Godfathers of Bounce, Tucker, and Herb. And they were calling us all kind of names, so I made this this record. So... The record was at like maybe twenty eight thousand um, when Master P came back home for a visit. Cause in New Orleans we didn't really know him. You know, we, we had we had never. Cause at this point he's in the, on the West Coast, right? He's on the West Coast, and yeah, we we didn't know him. But um, he came. I was working at Peaches Records in the, in a record store. Okay, I'm up and on that. He came to Peaches. Yes, the oldest mom and pops in America. They still May there, right? That's right. That's beautiful. So um, he was looking for uh lady rapper to join TRU, the rap group. And everybody was telling him, you have to hear Mia X. So um, I had clocked out and went home. Scarface was having a concert. I went to wash and set my hair so I could go to the concert. <laughs> Master P came to my house. I was under the dryer. And he was talking to me from the dryer saying, you know, yo, my label is going to be like the biggest in the world. And I'm under the dryer and I'm like, my hair is so thick, it's going to take forever to dry. But how long are you in town? He's like, I'm here. So I'm like, well, tomorrow, let's link up. Everything P said, I felt truth in it. I felt that he was going to do something that was going to shake Hip hop up. You could just feel it coming off him. I don't know if it was the the vibe, the drive. I had a couple of labels uh, after me at the time, but it was something about the way he said, "I'm about to change this thing." So we linked up. We went in the studio. Um, I did a couple of ad libs for him on his "99 Ways to Die" album, and then he was like, "You need to come out to California, you know, and we need to work." So that's what we did. Yeah. But I was I was pretty popular all over the South by the time I met Master P. I was already doing shows in Texas and in Florida. You know, I had already um, put my foot all the way down in, in hip-hop. So um, coming to No Limit, it was a win-win for both of us because we both had this drive to make the label grow. And when I got to L.A., um, he was like, now nah, let's go to Richmond. We go to Richmond. We meet all these producers. I did some records, and then I was like, listen, um, South, you got to let me go get you some producers some so bounce. that I could really do me. We need KL. And so then he met KL, and Bout It was born. Now, KL, was he part of the Medicine Men? Yes. Yo, the Medicine Men. They were beats Some, by the pound first. Right, right, right. Okay, so beats by the pound. That starts coming together. And, yo, like, sonically, what y'all were doing production-wise was crazy because, like, you know, it, ha it had a southern sound to it. If you remove the vocals, it could be any coast. It was so straight down the middle. But y'all were telling y'all stories and doing y'all thing and won the whole world over. And like to be in the perspective that I was in, I was doing, I was working for a record company at the time. So I'm in the retail stores. Every time No Limit would drop anything, it was coming off the racks, like right away. They didn't even know who the artists were. It's like Cain and Abel, okay, sure. Uh, <laughs> oh, this looks like it has a pen and pixel cover. Gotta be No Limit. That's we'll take right. it. There's it. Everything. <laughs> Moby Dick. What was the one girl who, like, I don't think her album ever came Mer out? Well, her album actually did come out. Mercedes. Mercedes. <laughs> it was promoted, like, three years, and they were going crazy over the album cover. Shout out to Mercedes, because she's still working, too. Um, yeah. I, like I said, when he said he was going to change the game, I felt truth in that. That part right there, you just felt it. Mm. And so um, 
being a, a, a lady like a mama, I helped him to assemble my children. Come on, Fiend, and come on, Mac. And come on, Cain and Abel. And come on, Beats by the Pound. You now, brought all those Moby guys Dick to Dick was table. his cousin, so he was already uh, with Percy. And Mr. Servon was his friend. But the other players in the game, Soldier Slim. And then it was like, look, bro, you need to go get Mystical. You bought me, so you, you the one that recommended me? Like, yes, you need to say, bro, nah, you need to, yeah, you, Snoop hollering at you, you need to go get Snoop. He, like, you know, the, the average mom would have never known all that. Right. And shout out to Moby Dick, a guy who I feel like was ahead of his time. Way ahead. Because, you know, you have singers, singers, you got singers. But what he was doing back then is kind of perfect for what's happening now. now. He created that whole vibe and mm. didn't even know that he was the one, you know, that really inspired it. If you go back and pull the Gangsta Harmony album or listen to any of the hooks he did on the No Limit stuff, yeah, he was definitely... Is he easy got to get a hold of these days? Yes, well, actually, we are working on an album, me, him, KL, and Mr. Servon, um... Three, three ends and abroad. That's what we used to call our house because we lived in an apartment together. Mm -hmm. And um, so we are working on an album together just um, to commemorate that time of us living in a house together in California, you know, struggling. Like, man, we was making way more money in New Orleans, but <laughs> <laughs> we got to put our grind down. Chase that dream. And build this label. And, and that's what happened. So you watched the No Limit thing go to astronomical heights. Around what time did you feel like things were slowing down with that particular movement and you kind of had to shake things up and do something differently? Um, we were just talking about when the comedians began to make fun of P with the uh and acting like they were constipated. Gotcha. I told KL we got to do a record and we got to flip it. So this dude don't be a joke. And I'm like, let's go back old school. You remember? Uh, uh, na -na 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 -na. I said, we about to straight flip that. And that's when Make Him Say Uh was born. And that's when the joke stopped. Wow. Then that became a signature trademark and everybody runs with it to this day. Man, so when's the last time you and Pete talked? Or like, are you guys on good terms? We talked... Um, it was about three weeks ago okay. about the I Got the Hookup uh, part two. Yeah. Yes. Is yeah. it a reboot or is it a sequel? I See, I'm not even sure. Okay. I've read a couple <laughs> things. I'm not sure, but that's the last time um, we talked. It was about three weeks ago. But I talked to everybody else all the time. What we did, we christened each other's children, and now those children are grown. Mm -hmm. Some of them have children. So, you know, we are family, and... um. If you don't do music and other things together with people, it doesn't change the fact, you know, your brothers and sisters is your brothers and sisters no matter what. Mad day, happy day, still your brothers and sisters. Yeah, now one of your brothers who has rainy days, sunny days, mystical. How's he doing? Is he in jail? Is he out of jail? What's going on with he's him? He's still there, but he's about to come home, and he's in really, really, really good spirits. Okay. Um, you know, he's such a, like, a, a fun fun person, a, a good person, a giving person. But he's in really, really good spirits. Okay. And um, I just can't wait till he come home because he's so fun to hang out with. I was ready for him to drop something immediately. I knew he was in the studio with Manny Fresh when he got out. And I'm like, why won't this project come out already? Like, I mean, he was out for a considerable amount of time. Right. Well, I, I, he had he had a project. I know he was working with Cash, Cash Money, Money, but the project uh, ended up not coming out. And so then, you know... Uh, the blessed thing for him is he was able to jump on a couple of collaborations that had him still touring and doing a lot of things. Yeah, he had a record with Mark Ronson that was real crazy on that uh, same joint that had uh, Bruno Mars on yes. it, so that's dope. 